In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the sixth Sunday of the Blessed Month of our Blessed Great Lent. Um, <clears throat> and as and the last official Sunday, as we know, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, or the Feast of the Lord's Entry into Jerusalem. And the following Sunday is the Resurrection uh, of our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and the Gospel hopefully is familiar to us, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 9. And we call today the Sunday of Baptism. So it's also the same gospel that we read the Sunday or the uh, fourth Sunday of Tuba or the Sunday after the Feast of Epiphany. Um, we can say that in the gospel of today or the sacrament of baptism, that the Lord Jesus Christ gives us light and sight. He gives us illumination. And the light is very symbolic, especially in the writings of uh, St. John the Evangelist, to bring us joy and newness of life. And the sight reminds us, or uh, when we reflect on this seeing, um, the fathers teach us this has to do with wisdom and knowledge and revelation and recognition of our sins that lead us to repentance. <clears throat> so in general, God wants us to know him. That's the theme of the gospel. That's the theme of today. And that's the theme of our repentance. And what does it mean to know God and to see him clearly? Uh, well, when we reflect on what St. Athanasius writes in his incarnation, <clears throat> he says there's generally four basic ways that God has given man to know him. Um, or four different means by which any person can come to know God and know him better and fully. So the first one, he says, um, from the creation, God created man in his image and likeness, right? And because of that, when we just look deeply into ourselves um, and know ourselves and see how we were created in his image and likeness, we get to understand or taste God. Um, <clears throat> and so this typically only happens through introspection, not only for repentance and, and to see what's evil that, that has become of us because of our, our sins, but also to see what God can do and has done uh, inside us to remove and to restore us to our first state. And so we, we are amazed at the beauty that God has placed inside of us. Um, <clears throat> as St. John, uh, sorry, as St. Paul says in his epistle to the Colossians, chapter 1, he says, The mystery which has been hidden from the ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. And then later he continues, The riches of the glory of this mystery. What is this mystery? He says, Christ in you. So Christ in you is a way to get to know God. Sometimes we think of God very far, but because we are baptized and chrismated, and have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, search inside for you to taste and see and know God. Um, that's, that's a very easy way. Um, he said, if that doesn't work, right? And even the people who are not baptized, God has placed in them his spirit um, or a spirit, which inter can interact with the Holy Spirit, at least on some level, not at the same level as chrismation, but at least on some level. That's why God gave us, made, created us in this way. <clears throat> the second, which is actually more basic, is, as St. Athanasius says, the harmony in the universe. Um, God wants us to know him, and he gave us eyes to perceive him through the creation, um, through the universe, through science, through beauty, through everything that he's created good and perfect. As uh, St. Paul says in, in his first chapter to the Romans, he says, For since the creation of the world... His invisible attributes are clearly seen. It kind of uh, seems contradictory. He says, we can't see God. He says, he has invisible attributes, but he says, we can see them through the creation. Um, and that's why everyone has a testimony or has a witness, even if they're not Christian, that God exists. Um, that's what St. Paul is saying here. He says, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and his eternal Godhead, um, so that they are without excuse. He's trying to say that 
God is giving many witnesses to everyone, uh, not only that He exists, but that He is all powerful and He is all loving. <clears throat> um, similarly, in uh, the end or towards the end of the book of Deuteronomy, um, Moses called all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt. So you have, you have seen the miracles, as we know, like the ten plagues and things like that. It says, <clears throat> To Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, the great trials which your eyes have seen, which also includes the 40 years in the wilderness, the signs and those great wonders. Yet, he says, the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear this very day. Um, meaning, God still has a lot of things in store for you to see and to hear and to know him. Okay. Um, the third witness, um, St. Athanasius says, has to do with the scriptures, especially uh, the Old Testament. Um, he says, <clears throat> and he talks about this as the uh, teaching. Um, and for those who want to take it a step further, bless you, between the seeing God in yourself, let's say you have, or you're struggling with that, or to see God in the creation, let's say you're ignoring, bypassing that. Well, what about the scripture, the holy word of God? Um, <clears throat> and um, when our thoughts become distracted with the worldly things, sometimes we look at the creation in the wrong way. Um, and we take the gifts and abuse them in the wrong way. He says, so, so then we need to go to scripture. Um, he says, when we stray from the truth, from the scripture, the, the, the scripture brings us back to, to knowing him and living with him. Um, and our hearts sometimes get carried away with the things of the world. And so um, then we end up just living to please ourselves. As St. Paul also says in the Romans, he says, God gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God, which is scripture, for a lie, the things that they want or choose to believe. And they worship and serve the cre creature rather than the creator. Um, <clears throat> so some there, there's a... A decision process sometimes that happens here when person rejects the creation they reject the spirit of god in themselves they reject the word of god even if they know the word of god um, and so this needs a change of mind the, the change of way that we think and the more we read scripture the more it purifies our thoughts um, even if we don't understand I, I would suggest to do it anyway and eventually god will enlighten you and your eyes will op be opened to see him and to know him. We might not understand everything in scripture. That's why we're encouraged to read it more and more. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, unfortunately, like as we said before, we see, a, we read of a lot of people who were um, possessed by demons in, in scripture. And there are a few around the world. And even in here. Uh, but more than that, I think the devil is, uh, is focused on changing our thoughts rather than possessing our bodies. And so we have to be careful. <clears throat> um, as St. Paul says uh, to the Corinthians, he says, I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. They're just, their minds are far from, from what is good, from what is true, from what is pure. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. So he's saying, okay, what does an ignorant person do to grow in knowledge? Read, learn, understand. Um, <clears throat> he says, the minds of the God of this age, the devil, has blinded. So this is what we're talking about when, when it comes to blindness. Um, because he says later on, it is God who commanded light to shine in the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the gospel or the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So this actually brings us back to the first point, is that the more we, we come in contact with scripture, the more the light shines in our hearts to see the glory of God in us. Um, who is Christ, who is the Holy Spirit as well. Um, <clears throat> and the last 
um, testimony um, that St. Athanasius says about that helps us to see God and to know him is the incarnation. And then he goes to Hebrews chapter 1 and he says, God, or he recites, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to our fathers by the prophets. That was the third one, the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures. He says, in God in many ways and in many times and in many different writings brings himself to us. That happened in the past. He says, but now there, there's even a more um, perfect way. He says, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Um, <clears throat> so, so St. Cyril says, um, the, the Old Testament ways are the various ways. In the New Testament, he speaks to us through Christ. He speaks to us through his, himself. Um, and then he says, in the same way the prophets received from the Logos of God, the knowledge, that is to say, revelation. Uh, the only begotten son also spoke formally through his Holy Spirit to the ancient prophets. He speaks in various ways. And then he says, for at the end of the ages, though, the son himself spoke to us through himself, no longer through the mediation of a prophet or the voice of saints, but through himself, the only begotten being born to our condition that that held converse with us. So um, then he clarifies the difference between revelation and teaching. He says, teaching has, has to do between one person, one human being, and another, right? But revelation is from God directly to us. Um, and we need both in, in the church. Um, but, but then he, he says, this is, this is uh, the way that God engrafts in each of us. Or he says, he Im implants in us the root of understanding and sends into our mind luminous vapors of his ineffable brightness in a manner and mode that only he himself knows. Um, th this is the beauty of God's relationship with each and every soul. Um, his desire for that person to see him and to know him um, better. And this is our desire as well. And sometimes you say, well, how come I don't feel it or I don't taste it or I don't see him? Well, persist in it. Persist in these four ways. Even the man of today, um, it took him a while, and we, we see him going from one stage to another. Um, he, he, he went first, he saw the healing that happened within, but it didn't bring him to the knowledge of Christ yet. He knew something had happened, um, and he didn't even know where he was after. Like, if you imagine before, he couldn't see. Then he saw, and he saw the Lord Jesus Christ, and they asked him, where is he now? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> this is the man who healed you. And so sometimes God does this healing to us and say, where is God in my life? Well, wh what did we do wrong? <laughs> where did where did we uh, stop following him? Um, and then even he began at, in conversation when, with them to say, well, let me look at nature. I know by nature this can't happen. Um, so God is actually teaching me through, through nature that he is with me. Um, and that's why he said, then he, then he went to the third step when they asked him, who is he? Who do you say he is? He said, I think he's a prophet. So he, he put Christ with the prophets. Of course, he's, a, he's above all, all the prophets. And that's what he realized at, at the end of the gospel today when he, he reunited with the Lord. And, and the Lord revealed himself to him personally. And, he, and, he, and then the, the man who was born blind and healed worshipped the Lord. Um, <clears throat> and so we see him going from one step to another, to another, to another. Um, and this is what uh, St. John describes in his Catholic epistle of today. He says, And we know the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and that we are in him who is true. Um, in his son, Jesus Christ. It says, this is the true life, a true God and eternal life. Um, what is the true God and eternal life? That we may know him, that we may be in him. This is the whole purpose of, of our life here on earth is to unite with God, to abide in him and he in us. And we know this, but sometimes we don't 
feel it or we don't taste it or we don't take the necessarily steps that are required to, to taste it. Um, sometimes we do, and then it's just a matter of patience and, and faith um, and, and waiting for him to reveal himself to us. Um, and so, uh, like we say in the Psalms, uh, or actually in the liturgy, in Psalm 145, the eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. So we know you're going to feed us, but you have the proper time. Um, you manage our life as deemed fit. We say in the same prayer. Um, <clears throat> and so he is, and then when you look at scripture, uh, this, is, this, is, this is how we look to God. But how does God look to us? Oftentimes, we only assume that, uh, like even in, in the hymns, we say, turn away your wrath from us, or do not look at me in anger. But we know that God has that potential, but oftentimes, when we put our eyes on Him, uh, because of His love for us, He can't take it. Um, and uh, like, for example, <clears throat> um, when Simon Peter, when he denied the Lord, did he speak? He just wept in the garden. That was it. All he had to do was communicate to God with his eyes and his heart. <clears throat> and the Lord knew what was inside of his heart. The repentant woman, did she speak? Uh, we, no. She went, she wept at his feet, she washed the, the, the feet with her hair, and she anointed them um, it, depending on which one we're talking about, we're going with, with uh, a very expensive perfume. Um, <clears throat> and so that's what we say, uh, like the Psalms uh, say, our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Um, Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to their master, so I will look to you um, <clears throat> until you have mercy. Um, and then what is the response of God Because when we do this? Um, so no, no, not yet. Um, no, that's not that's not how he responds. If you look at uh, the Song of Songs um, in chapter four and chapter six, he says, "You have ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. You have ravished my heart with one look of your eyes. Not just because she was beautiful, but because she's looking. We are looking to him with this need." Um, <clears throat> and then he says in, in another chapter, "Turn away your eyes from me, for they have overcome me. This is too much for me to handle." because I love you so much and, and I see what you're going through and I know you're going through it and I need you to go through it, um, but it, it's, it's hurting me as well. But I know what it is doing in you and that's why I need you to carry this cross. That's why I need you to wait a little until my glory is revealed in you. <clears throat> and so uh, this is what happened um, with many people in scripture. And this man, um, if, if you think about it, um, he the story kind of reveals to us many different um, aspects of, of the soul's relationship with God. And like we said in the beginning, one of the main symbols or sacraments that is revealed here is what? We call it the Sunday of baptism. Why? Because there was a pool, right? And he used the word anointing, right? Um, which, which, is reflecting of the sacrament. <clears throat> um, and he uh, he used the mud, right? Which is a combination of, as we know, dirt and water. Um, and so this, the, the Father teach us that this is a reminder of the, the unity between the physical and the spiritual, the human and the divine, right? And that's what happens in the sacraments. That's what happens in us. Um, uh, that's what happened in the Lord Jesus Christ to different extents. But the, the unity of the physical and the spiritual. <clears throat> he says, we provide the physical, we provide the dirt, right? God provides the grace. He provides the anointing. Um, <clears throat> we offer the bread and the wine and the water and the oil, and he transforms it into something heavenly. Um, <clears throat> so that means we have to offer something. We have to offer ourselves. He, he submitted himself to, to do something very silly and to walk across the city with mud in his eyes. Um, <clears throat> well, the question is, well, what are you willing to sacrifice? Um, what are you willing to offer? Um, it is, it, is it the best of what you have or is it 
like is it the first 10 percent or is it the last or is it not even um uh, is it is it the sacrifice of cain or is it the sacrifice of abel the righteous um <clears throat> That's one, each one of us has to answer that, especially in the, the, the last two weeks of this blessing, uh, the blessed fast. The more we offer, the more grace we taste, we, we, we receive. Um, maybe not immediately, most likely not immediately, um, but the Lord sees and knows and remembers and, and takes account. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes the saints who gave up everything uh, sometimes reflect um, at the end of their life, I wish I could have given even more. Uh, like, for example, some of um, some of the great saints in the early days, they would sell their selves into, they would give everything they have to, to the poor and needy and not have enough to give. So they would sell themselves into slavery to get money to give. Um, that's, that's the extent of the giving that, uh, that they were at. Um, <clears throat> And so the more we're able to offer, the more we taste and, and the cross, the blessings of the cross, not the pain of the cross only, but the blessings behind it um, and the grace that is attached to it that we can't see, but we can taste and feel. <clears throat> and so um, this is the way that the believer begins to know God um, through not only through offering, but through the reflection of how we are created as temples of the Holy Spirit and how the creation testifies of the glory of God from the stars uh, in, in the sky all the way to the microbes that we look in. Micro everything testifies of the glory of God. Um, then through the scripture itself, which is the breath and the word of God. Um, and then finally through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who is the perfect man, the, the one who took our form and revealed to us not only how we should live, but how much he loves us. May the Lord give us this knowledge of him more and more, not just once in our life, but on a daily basis um, until we abide in him forever. Glory be to him now from the ages.